Ko te kai kōrero tua tai uh, mō tēnei ata, he tino o ki au. Tami te rangi, nō Ngāti Whātua, nō Ngāpuhi, is represented as iwi across a range of kaupapa, including resource and environmental management. He was a member of the Ministerial Advisory Committee for Sea Change and has been involved in several Auckland Council-based initi initiatives such as chairing the selection panel for the Council's independent Māori Statutory Board. Nā nā nō nei tō tātou rangi i waka tūwera i roto i ōna kōrero ki te wā i ngaro nō reira a e te oinga tēnā nau mai ki te ata mire e tame. Tēnā koe pāhia, me o kupu e pai nei rā i, I te reka o ngā kōrero. A te uri o, o te uri wera i hora nei ki mui a tātou. Yeah, I, I struggled to find uh, an angle um, to address the question of te ao Māori. And I'll put a little bit of context before showing you a video and I'll uh, restrict this to to my five minutes. A question by the late great Tumanako Wereta to a stalwart of that institution called IOD. Michael, has the Institute of Directors established a module on wisdom yet? That was about 2017. So those of you who proudly hang your recognition of directorship on your wall, just check to see if there's a module on wisdom related to what you've just heard uh, today. Mahuhu Kiterangi tells a story of two brothers in dispute over Tena Tuakana rights. If you could imagine the time about 1200, Tuakana says, I'm out of here. <clears throat> Prepares for a journey across the Moana Nuiā Kiwa, does a circuit of the North Island and ends up in a place called, that he called, Tāporapora. On arriving there, there were some three or four generations of the descendants of Toi Kairako, already in occupation. So this myth about Ngāpuhi converting uh, the waka ngā toki or uh, and, and uh, mātātua, sorry, and taking it north was sort of preceded by a number of Toi Kairako stories that had occurred uh, at the time of Rongo Mai and his father Pakato and others on Mahu Kitirangi landing there. Some time around 1852 to 56, a person by the name of Byron Denny, he was a commander on a vessel called the Pandora. They completed a survey of the Kaipara Harbour and that survey revealed a prominent tree that came right out to the entrance of the harbour and it had two channels. The northern channel was called Te Wairoa, the southern channel was called Kaipara. And the name Kaipara was attributed to our links to Tarawa and I, I say the royal we, the Ngāti Pātua links to Te Arawa of that time. And following that period of survey, two interesting publications were put together. One was called The Riddle of the Kaipara, and the other was called The Unknown Kaipara. So when you listen to Tena talking in that context, and then you start to sort of 
think of the context on how do you get the Crown, local government, your own Pananga to recognise that really the answer is kei roto i te au i te kapu o tātou ringa ringa. We can go to great heights to look for the swishiest piece of negotiation or we can uh, just pace up to it. So on that basis, uh, I've got a short video that I'd like to leave you with and, uh, and hopefully um, give you a bit of an insight of, on what we're up to, where we've got to. I won't bore you with too many other details. Kia ora tata. The Jobs for Nature program was an initiative brought through by the government as part of our COVID response recovery. It was an ambitious project. Fundamentally, it's about investing in sustainable jobs for community, but nature-based jobs. Ultimately, we're investing in the Kaipu Moana catchment. We're aiming to support communities, iwi and hapu groups, landowners of all types to take action to reduce sediment going into the Moana. But because we're Jobs for Nature funded, we also invest in people. The story behind uh, this whole effort was about remediation and the restoration of such an important part of our identity. Councils have been working in this space for a long time, um, working with landowners to try and improve our waterways, but KMR is like the supercharged project that we've got the opportunity to be part of. It's a real amazing opportunity to work with a really wide range of people and stakeholders. So we have really good, diverse and robust conversations and I think that sets us up to do good work that will get the remediation outcomes that we need. So the Kaipara Moana Remediation Program has so many learnings that it can share with the rest of New Zealanders or Aotearoa who are undertaking environmental programs. I think some of the richness in terms of the importance of partnership and continuing to work with communities. The Jobs for Nature funding has enabled a 50% share supporting the Claytons with the funding of the fencing and planting projects. So 50% funded by the, the landowner and 50% by Kaipara Moana Remediation, which is in itself funded by Jobs for Nature. The funding has been huge. Our children and their children, and hopefully their children, have a place that they're proud of. So they've created some areas where there is water quality enhancement, so they've put the fences in, then they've planted around those areas that don't have any trees at all, which would, over time, stop sediment getting into the waterways, which would eventually end up in the Hōtio and then the Kaipara Harbour. The Jobs for Nature funding has actually been able to create a number of networks so that we can all come together with a passion, and with that passion we share with each other as not only Kaipara Uri, but those who have a heart and actually want to do the right thing by the moana and by whenua.